We all do it. I do this all the time. You sit down to have a great productive day studying and then at the end of the day you realize you spent half the time like scrolling on your phone, going to get snacks, making your 10th cup of coffee that day and you got done maybe half of the stuff you were planning to do and it's normal but it's still not productive. So if you actually want to be able to stay locked in and not have to have this like insane willpower then this video is for you. My name's Maggie. I'm a fourth year medical student which means I'm in my like seventh year of studying. So I've tried out all the different methods to stay focused and these are things that I keep coming back to time after time again because they actually work. And disclaimer I'm not like there are channels that are purely dedicated to giving you like productivity content, how to be efficient and blah, blah, blah. I'm not one of those. I'm just trying to make it through med school personally. But again, these are things that have worked for me. Cause the thing is you're getting distracted, but you're not lazy. You're not a lazy person, especially anybody could be watching this video. But if you're a pre-med, like that curriculum itself takes a lot of focus and dedication to get through it. So you're not lazy. You're just going through like something that is objectively challenging. Especially in this day and age, like we do, we want like small dopamine hits, we wanna scroll, like things like that. Those things are easy and rewarding. And when you first sit down to start studying, like you may be excited because you feel like you're gonna have a nice productive long like study day, but actually doing the, like getting into studying, it's hard especially just to start. And the trick really is not to just try harder, it's to start with something easy and get that momentum going because once you get that momentum, it's a lot easier to carry it through. So there's a little bit of prep work that goes into this, right? And one thing is having a good dedicated study space. This is something I even struggle with because like my couch is a lot more comfortable than this chair, but I honestly have so much more like productive study days when I study at this desk because everything that I have laid out onto it is like built for me to have an efficient study day. And you don't have to have a dedicated desk. If, if it is your couch or if it is just like your kitchen table or something like that, just some place that that's where you go every day to do your studying because your brain's going to associate that spot with you being focused and you getting things done if that's all that you do there. Additional things like don't have clutter all over this desk, don't have fun things to do at this desk or this spot, this coffee table, whatever it is. And you to have like bare minimum stuff, just like stuff that you need in order to study. So like your laptop, a place to like charge things, good lighting so that you can see what you're doing and things that are in general set up for focus and not comfort because your environment is programming your brain whether you realize it or not. Next is something that I do sometimes when I'm planning to sit down and have like a whole day studying. I don't think this is super necessary if you're just going to do like, you know, one set of your world questions or whatever it is. But if I'm going to sit down and have like a whole day studying, I will like spend just a couple minutes at the very beginning, like hi like typing out a little thing of like purpose. And this sounds super cheesy, but I swear like sometimes like purpose can sort of drive attention and then your attention can drive your focus. So I'll write down like the broad scope of things, things I'm trying to learn that day and then just write down like why I'm doing it. So I'm trying to study OBGYN materials for step two today. You're trying to study biochem for the MCAT today. I mean, just like broad stroke type things. But the truly the biggest tip I could give you is to have a to-do list. I have one on like my notes app or sometimes it'll it like fluctuates whether it's in my notes app or it's on like a sticky note in on my computer, like the virtual sticky notes. But your to-do list should be granular. Like you should not have study biochem on there. Break your goals down into tiny goals. So say I'm going to watch a video about Michaelis Minton kinetics. Another task would be I'm going to do three passages on Michaelis Minton kinetics or, you know, three, you know, 10 questions on Michaelis Minton kinetics, whatever it is. And then I'm going to do my 20 Anki cards that I just unsuspended on Michaelis Minton kinetics. And yeah, doing those three tasks may take you an hour, hour and a half or something, but that's the thing. Then you get to check it off. And everyone knows how good it feels to check something off of your to-do list. It feels like you're winning. It feels like you're making progress. And then that momentum really carries you forward. It matters so much more than you think. I won't write down that I need to film a YouTube video. I will write down that I need to film a YouTube video, upload it for my editor, create the thumbnail, like every aspect of filming a YouTube video or like uploading a YouTube video, I will have a different task on my to-do list 
because it feels so good to check it off. So break your tasks down into tiny achievable wins for you because those wins are going to build momentum and momentum is really what carries you. Another thing that happens to me oftentimes is I will have been studying for a while and I will get really, really stuck, but it'll only be like noon and I'm like, I need to continue studying. But even doing these tasks, even doing like, oh my, you know, my task that says do 20 you all questions, that feels insurmountable. That feels way too difficult. So what I will do in those instances is I will tell myself, hey, just do five. Sometimes I'll be like, just do one. But by the time I get done doing one, I'm like, that wasn't that bad. It took a minute of my life. I can do another. And by the time I do five, I'm like, it wasn't that bad. I can do five more. Like I can do five more and give myself a little treat or something. So you don't have to tell yourself, hey, I'm gonna do a whole like, you know, if you have on your to-do list that you wanna do 10 CP passages and that feels insurmountable to you, just tell yourself to do two. Tell yourself to do one and see where that momentum gets you at the end of doing that one passage. Cause I guarantee you, you're gonna feel like I didn't enjoy it, but it wasn't that bad. I can do one more, you know? And then before you know it, you will have gotten to 10 and then you can mark it off your to-do list and then you feel good about yourself and then you're ready to do the next task. Cause you're like, that felt so good. I really wanna do another task that made me feel so good. Or just, we want tiny dopamine hits. So just give yourself tiny dopamine hits with studying. We're like biohacking our brains. Something that a lot of people will tell you to do is to do the Pomodoro method, which if you're not familiar, it's to like set a timer to do 25 minutes of work and then take a five minute break and you just cycle that. So 25 minutes, five minutes, 25 minutes, five minutes. I personally don't like that because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I'm just like watching my time, my life tick away. And also by the time I get to 25 minutes, if I'm really like locked in and focused, I'm like, I don't want to stop. Like I do want to stop, but like, now it's not a good time for me to stop. And then five a five minute break, what am I supposed to do with a five minute break? Like go to the bathroom? Like I just don't like the Pomodoro method. So if that doesn't work for you, do it based on tasks instead. Like be like, oh, I'm gonna do, you know, 10 passages or whatever, hold on, let me think, MCAT timing, you know, five passages or whatever. And then I'm gonna stand up and stretch for a couple minutes, refill my water bottle and I'll come back and do five more. If that kind of like breaking it down like that helps you. Personally, I don't really, do all that. I more prefer like just marking off tasks and using that momentum. And then I'll take larger breaks during the day. So I'll block off like three hours in the morning and then I'll take like an hour long break because to me, then I can actually do something with that time. I can, you know, do my Pilates or make lunch or something like that. And these things are kind of going to be specific to you, right? Like I have gum on my desk because to me like chewing gum or like drinking water or something like that like something about that just like helps me to focus i feel like i'm doing something at the same time that i'm focusing so i'm not worried about like maybe that's like a little bit of like adhd i don't know but maybe we should all understand that ADHD is like sort of a spectrum and like we all get distracted and things like that and fidgety and even if it's not to like the pathologic level where we'd actually call it a disorder, we can still like use some of the same tricks that work for those people when they get distracted. And sometimes just having like a little, I mean, I wish I had a fidget toy. Like I really want a fidget toy, but like if that's what, you, if you need a fidget toy to, to get through your passages, just grab the fidget toy. No big deal. You'll have so much adrenaline going on test day that like you won't even need that. And the last thing is do not expect these tips to mean that you're never going to get distracted again. You can build a perfect system. You can have the best desk set up ever. You can use the Pomodoro method. You can have the greatest to-do list. You're still going to get distracted. Here's the thing, being a person who has a lot of focus, it's not about being perfect and never getting distracted. It's about refocusing faster. So don't beat yourself up for getting distracted. Notice it, get what whatever the distraction is, out of the room, reset your timer, whatever it is, take your goal, make it even smaller. Cause right now you're in a space where you don't have momentum built up. Remember you just got distracted. So make your goals even smaller and then just get back on it, get back on the horse. And just like most other things in life, it's like training a muscle. And every time you do this and are able to go through that process of like, Hey, I see I'm getting distracted. I'm going to get the distractor out of here and I'm going to refocus. Every time you do that, your ability to do it gets 
better, get stronger. So at the end of the day, it's not about being perfect. It's mainly about building momentum. You all are motivated people and you all have a strong purpose for doing what you're doing. But when you're actually doing the granular act of studying, it is about momentum. Every little win stacks up and you're going to be amazed where you are and how far you can get once you start moving and you start getting things done. And it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, that's all I have for you guys. If you are studying for the MCAT and want any help with it, check the link in the description below or any of the links. I think we have a bunch in there. Like this video, subscribe, let me know what you want to see next. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!